We are on to the elevators. So I sorted the four pieces, upper left skin, upper right skin, lower left skin, lower right skin. I laid them out <clears throat> just the way they are here so I don't mess up the bends. So for the rudder, I used this PVC tube. Then I put a, uh, stri not a straight edge, but a, uh, a right angle aluminum. Yeah, just square stock, but at a right angle. Uh, I was able to draw the line down the center. Because this flexes, it's hard to tell, but when you're bending it, I now decided to use this uh, closet rod. It's also one and a quarter inch. Uh, I haven't drilled them yet. We're gonna see how that goes. This uh, I had laying around in my little bucket of tricks over there. And it looks like it's just barely long enough, but it doesn't flex. So I'm hoping that by bending this, <clears throat> it'll be easier than the rudder because these are actually longer and uh, longer this way, but shorter this way. So less leverage. And we're gonna give that a try. And the reason I laid them out like that is because these upper two, I have to bend downward and the bottom ones I have to bend up. I just don't want to mess it up. All right, wish me luck. And since winter is now hitting New England, I had to supply some heat down there. So when we built the house, we sized the heating system. We have two, one for the second and third floor and this one for the basement and first floor because this is all supposed to be built out with a home theater, bathroom, guest bedroom in that corner, workout area in here. But then the plane came in the way, so I never actually put heating down here. It's pretty well insulated with the isonine, but that was a makeshift hole to get some heat in here. It works. Also making progress on this dual flavored popcorn. So the drawback with the um, shiny silver hard tube, a couple of things. First of all, it rolls all the time when you're trying to mark it. So I just put it in a little U-channel. That worked pretty well. And this is the aluminum right angle that I was talking about. But on the white PVC, A, you can draw with a precise pencil and uh, it's visible. This thing was so shiny, I couldn't see anything. and. I had to draw with a magic marker. It didn't draw all that well. So I just put a piece of tape on it and uh, now I can draw with a finer pen. Basically just starting over, but makes the whole thing a little, a little easier to read and easier to do. Uh, music playing in the background, I hope they don't cancel me copyrights again. La 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 la, I gotta speak loud so it doesn't pick it up. Uh, move this down, we're not playing that Penetrar, no, nope, no, nope, not looking to make money off of it. No, 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 and I'm just babbling, the song is over, and I am done. These outside holes, the first ones you gotta drill are 58 inches apart. So I'm gonna do that now. Cool, success. So at first I was worried about ovaling out the holes and I was going to do like every fourth one on a different sheet. But that was kind of ridiculous. I was able to see my little line right through the holes. And as long as that remained perfect, I was able to touch the drill bit down. And as soon as it cut the blue tape away and it was uh, perfectly centered, I would continue drilling it. The little U-channel on the bottom, that worked out great for stability. I put some two by fours here just to keep it as straight as possible. And these are invert, uh, inverted, so I just wrote out and in for outside and inside. So when I flip it over to do the right side, these holes 
these holes line up with those holes and then if you flip it over they line up with these holes so obviously you don't have to make four different tubes I like this part about the holes need to follow the top of the tube pretty well um, it wasn't as easy as I thought but you just have to be precise so I drilled them all out and then I I flipped it over so if any hole was off a little bit in one direction it would be amplified because now it's a mirror image from what I use as a pre-drill. Um, I had two holes that I wasn't 100% satisfied with. Yeah, so I just marked them and I elongated the hole in the tube um, just so the Clico fits in there. I was thinking about just bending it without the Clico. And the thing with the steel tube or this closet rod, I think is a great idea. You can see I started to bend it. This was doing it one person, but probably gonna have to get some backup. It's Halloween, my daughter's upstairs having a little party, so don't wanna bother her. The wife's working, the dog's useless. So we're gonna call it a night and see if I can get some help doing it tomorrow. All right, we have backup power here. Girl power to roll these skins. See we can do this. Okay, is that 90 degrees? Yep. Not anymore. Well, these are, it's supposed to be 85 to me. I think that looks good. Looks good? Okay. Yeah. It should be 85 to 90 degrees, so. Yeah. We have to click on the next skin. So if you want to go upstairs. It'll take a minute to. Thank you, Alina. So when you have a little help, it certainly goes a lot faster. This is the upper and lower elevator skins. And they're supposed to be turned 90, 85 to 90 degrees. I think we definitely, definitely have that. And uh, I don't know, didn't really learn much from it other than put a lot of force on it. And having this metal rod, which is now, took me two hours to make, and probably never be used again unless some other Rand's builder wants it. Um, definitely the metal rod works much, much better. And if you can have one or two extra people pushing down on it while you bend it, it makes a big difference. Now that we have the skins bent, today's project is to assemble the frame structure for the elevators and uh well that's embarrassing that's why i'm a dog person not a cat person these are the parts i put aside for the elevator you're gonna inventory them and build some elevators yay did you vote? Today was voting day.
So as you can see, the elevator tip rib had quite an arch to it. It didn't say to do this, but I don't know, common sense, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, I use my fluting pliers just to flatten that out. So it's uh, straighter. I just realized that the flanges on the two outside trailing edge ribs face inwards and the others face outwards. All right, so these guys face inward and I had these backwards, but I just changed them. Oh, those two face outwards. Outwards, inwards, sorry, outward, outward, and inward. Um, all these guys face inward, except for these. Holds the elevator horn and faces outward. I think I have these guys correctly. This was pretty tight. Um, I might recall other people having issues with that. I got it in there, but um, it didn't have that satisfying feel. I was going to spend a few hours tonight working on the plane. But then somehow the evening got away from me. So I said, I got to at least do something. So always look ahead, try to get a game plan for the next time you're working on it. So I wasn't sure if you had the match drill. Uh, I'll just go something like this all of these but I watched the video and you do so I did I matched drilled the, the rest of the holes through here then I took this off so I can get the rivet gun in here and I riveted all of these um, what else I started to rivet the brace in the middle and now I'm gonna rivet this kind of going through all of the oddball rivets the AP WAPQ 46s and 42s and then the rest I can just do all with the 41s. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to find the 46s here. AAPQ 46s. 12 of those. So yeah, I just spread my table so the uh, elevator juju can hang down. And this was a little bit tight. I've heard, uh, I think I read something about Randy giving his blessings so you could open these up. I was able to fit them in. You can see there's a little, little tension that they want to go inward. I think I'm going to stick with, with what I got because it does fit. but it's not that satisfying fit. All right, we got the majority riveted in. Instructions say to leave these two out. Makes sense because the hinge for the trim tab is gonna go there. Another hinge for the trim tab here. That's this piece I already marked. I think I'm gonna cut it so it kind of looks like what they have in the picture everybody says it's a pain in the butt so I haven't gone there yet I did transfer drill the rest of them on the elevator rib and I put Clecos into all those the trailing edge rib has number 30 holes in it I mean they all do and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to transfer drill those. So obviously all the ribs have holes in them that aren't being used. 
Um, I don't see anything that says if I do or don't. So I think I'm gonna call it a night here. Go watch some videos and see if I can learn from someone else. Okie dokie. So we riveted all these. I watched some videos and they didn't rivet these, so I'm gonna let that be. One thing that was a little confusing, they said to rivet on these nut plates, but nowhere does it say which rivets to use, but, um, or what nut plates that I could see in my book anyway, but I found these 330 seconds rivets that uh, fit it and I also noticed that the hole on the inside wasn't big enough so I opened it up I also saw the project 2 guy do it in uh, the video so that was very helpful thank you and because that would have been kind of bad to put this in and then not have it fit the uh, 830 second screw next up is they want you to put the trailing edge skins just on the trailing edge ribs. So I'm gonna trim those off. It's my favorite Dremel. And uh, yeah, that's it. Lots of Clecos. So we trim the edges off the trailing edge trim tab and basically click out the top skins on and the splice, which, yeah, that's the splice. Uh, they said to use lots of Clecos in the middle. I probably used too many Clecos throughout, but I'm assuming that these are gonna have to be match drilled, so I kinda wanna make sure everything's tight. Next up is laying out the parts for the elevator trim tab. So we're gonna do that now. All right, before I get too far ahead, I forgot the video earlier, but what I've done so far is cut the bend tabs off of the elevator trim tab. I assembled these, I had it all click out and they want you to rivet those on. The outside ones on both ends face inward like this. The left one has one, two, three, four, five ribs while the right one has one, two, three ribs. So that could be confusing, I suppose. But um, this has to do with the trim tab that mounts underneath. Then I click out the whole thing together and you had to transfer, drill all of these holes into that. Right here, click out a whole bunch of stuff, drilled all those holes. And the reason I just took it all apart is just to um, sand and deburr everything. And the next step now is to Clico it, uh, sorry, yeah, Clico it and then rivet it together. And the only places they don't want you to rivet is where I have the blue tape because this corresponds with where the hinges go on the actual elevator. So just in case I get into the riveting zone, I put the tape there to remind me not to rivet there. Okay, with the trim tab all done and riveted, next up they wanted us to flip the elevator over onto its top skin. I wasn't sure if I should be riveting it, but it didn't say anything. So I looked forward a little bit and there was another section where you rivet the top and the bottom skin. So I left the Clecos in there and you have to center the trim tab in the opening that you have in the elevator. 
So what I did is I cut two pieces of 3 16 ABS that wedged in there and held it in place nice. So this will give me perfect center. The center seam lines up, which is nice. And I can actually take take the wood out and it, it holds itself. It's not too much tension, so I don't think it'll bow the elevator per se, but it allows it to just sit there. I can line up the trailing edge. I can line up the, uh, the top edge where there's no rivets. And next up is the hinges. So I'm cutting the hinges and I realized that the first part of the hinge is not a full half an inch. I measured it to here and it was a little bit shy because of the saw blade. So five and a half inches from here to here, cut again here, here to here, cut again here, and obviously take the uh, center pin out. So I got the hinges cut. I cut them over there on the table saw. Probably might've been better with a, a cutoff tool, but anyway, I still have all my fingers. And then I lined them up. These, you have to be careful, because I actually noticed, even though they were tight, my little 316 spacer, it did create a slight arch in here, like, because, because nothing's riveted yet, so it actually bowed it a little bit. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm keeping these in. I have the hinges drilled and clecoed to the elevator spar. Next step is, is to mark them with the holes that are on the other side here. Um, all right, so my point is that I left these in. I'm gonna do the outside ones and then I'll pull these out. And there's not a lot of tension on it. It literally, you know, it comes right out. But it was just enough to take a little bit away from the center there. And they want you to flip it back correctly, but I couldn't figure out an easy way to keep the hinge tab up to mark it. So I did a little different approach. I basically put it back the way I had it, had it all leveled out. And then I took this little scribe, um, a little surgical tool, I don't even know where I got it. But I just went underneath there and marked all the holes. Like scraped them one by one. And it works pretty good. As you can see, I got the markings here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna do these and then do that and then come back and do the, the center. But I'm gonna leave that for tomorrow because I'm tired. Got all the hinges marked, drilled. I did do it upside down, like I said. And uh, it seems like it stands a little proud on the bottom. <clears throat> you can tell it's pretty, uh, pretty flush on the top. So the elevator's upside down. But then again, I don't have the lower skin on yet, but it just feels like it's a little bit thicker, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It lines up perfectly along the edge back here. Check that. Yep. All right, next step is go fly. No, wait, first I gotta take these off and rivet them. Well, I got them all riveted on. They all look to be about the same distance. So I'm happy with that. Got these guys riveted on. I uh, rounded over the corners a little bit. And I had to bend these, so I did five eighths. I made a little mark and I kind of made it level with that it's uh flush or at least you can see the the pin sticking through the last hinge joint and uh drilled the two number 40 holes like they said all i did is uh mark it at five eighths and i put in my little vise here um it's frustrating because i have a nice machinist vise at work but this is all i have here and bent it with a hammer so i got it's close to 90 and then I put the drill bit in there to just over you know be able to bend it the, the rest of the way and that worked out really good today's mission is to 
transfer drill these holes i already did a couple and then flip the whole thing over do the same thing on the other side and i think yeah you're gonna transfer drill them take it all apart clean it rivet it and then flip it over and the next step after that will be to put the tip skins on there's been controversy between putting them over like the manual says or people putting them underneath i think i'm going to put them underneath too because they look better transfer drill those and so on and so forth Okay, I got the top side riveted. I left off the last two rows actually. I figured maybe it'll help me with a little bit of flexibility. These are all 41 rivets, even here where it goes through technically three pieces. But um, calls for all 41s. And I'm really, really happy with it. I kept measuring. End to end, I was off by 0.1 degree, according to my not so accurate little Amazon Wixi scale here. But um, measured it several times during the process. And then I riveted one section at a time, starting from the outside in. No particular reason for that. And I'm really gonna flip it over and then do the, the bottom tomorrow. My Clico buckets are almost full, so that can only mean that a lot of rivets were put into the wing. I got the upper skin and the lower skin done. Got the front done. I guess what I didn't realize is uh, that I was supposed to wait to put these on, which makes sense because otherwise it'd be very easy to bend them walking by. Um, I put them on before I put the skins on and now in the manual it says to put them on now. The, like I said, I left the last two rows open just to give me some flexibility to put this in. And the other challenge I have is getting on the, uh, the horn, getting these rivets in. So I left Clicos there. And I also left this very last one because it's very tight. I can't get the gun in there. Again, if I had left this off, I could, but I believe Vans, or somewhere I've read that for a Vans build, they make this little angle tool, like a spoon looking thing that spaces this out somehow so you can get the rivet gun in there. I'm gonna look into that, see if I can find it, I'll let you know. All right. YouTube to the rescue. This place is, uh, well, this piece is called a close quarters rivet tool. I suppose you can probably just make your own tool. Uh, found it on YouTube, on a band's building forum, and probably gonna order one. Me leaving the second row out was probably not necessary. Right now I'm at the point where I click out these like they said, I put in the little divider rib for the weight. I'm gonna now have the, uh, uh, the elevator upside down. So I'm gonna mark the hole here for the half inch where you put the lead weight in to counterbalance it. One thing I noticed is that the radius of the bend of the tip skin here was quite a bit larger than the trailing edge. So I had trouble move, getting this in and moving it back far enough. Um, I did a little bit of this. 
where you just gently kind of collapsed it a little bit to the point where it fits much nicer and it actually does fit now and that worked for that quite well <clears throat> then they want me to transfer drill the very last rivet hole I did it on the other side I just flipped it over to do this side and also to mark up there I haven't quite figured out why yet but I'm gonna do that and same thing on this side working uh, simultaneously so that's the project for tonight so hard to see with the light as i'm drilling this hole out like they said the transfer drill <clears throat> i noticed something odd that got me thinking so these are spaced one and an eighth inch apart and two three beautiful and i come over here and like one two but this is only seven eighths apart so i was like uh oh i double checked they're both five two of those same part number anyway long story short the reason i do that is because on the other side they're spaced one and an eighth inch apart and if you had these rivets in the same spot they would collide because it's so narrow in there and that's my theory and i'm sticking to it but anyway made me stop and think be like oh no did i do something wrong all right we got that clay coat in just on the bottom side i'll flip it over and do the other side what you saw me do there is uh flute these because like the ribs these things are pretty arched from i guess when they bend them so the fluting pliers will put little dimples in them and you want to get the whole thing as flat as possible then i just use this square piece of wood <clears throat> to make sure that the mounting flanges are perpendicular to the to the face of it um, where this all goes on the inside they do give you a good amount of space here so you can kind of push the rib back and get it to line up it's um yeah it actually went in pretty easy but it could potentially be a struggle so i'm gonna do the same thing here um just like that vans tool those shavings would drive me crazy um this has been done a couple of times from other youtubers and i'm going to follow the same advice by putting some rtv inside here so when you balance this elevator the there's a there's a epoxy mix i guess with some lead shot that gets poured in here and then just dries once it's level yet or balanced and to keep the epoxy from running out through the little corner with these two holes you um kind of just seal it up i think that's a good idea doesn't seem like it could hurt so i'm going to do that before i put the end caps on all right more confusion slide the tip skin underneath the elevator skins and clico in place got it transfer drill the most aft hole from the trailing edge skin to the tip skin so trailing edge tip skin most aft hole but nowhere does it say specifically says the most aft hole so I was waiting for a point in the instructions to tell me to transfer drill all of them I'm just gonna go ahead and do that I don't see any reason not to I assume they're gonna have to be drilled eventually because at the very end <clears throat> it says finish riveting the rest of the elevator tips together so that's what we're gonna do today Transfer drill these, take it all apart, deburr it um, up where the little divider is for the lead shot thing. I'm going to put the RTV in. I'm going to use this. I think it'll be good enough or sufficient for what we need. And then it looks like the elevator might be finished tonight. Actually, I take that back. I still got to get that Vans tool or something to get these corner ones in. Same thing with the, uh, the ones in the middle there. Maybe I'll just invent something. So 
sometimes I wonder if I'm overthinking it by taking this all apart again rather than just riveting it. But I did find a good amount of uh, well, a few little shavings in there. So I'm going to run some, some sandpaper inside there to deburr to the best of my ability. I know I can't get to the bottom of it. But uh, one thing I noticed, if you look at this little trailing edge rib, that thing wasn't, that guy wasn't even lined up. So I missed drilling into it. No, actually these ones I didn't drill, it was, it was just through the skin. So in a way, it's a blessing in disguise that I took it all apart again so I can uh, straighten that last little rib. So I'm assembling the tip skin ribs, tip skins underneath the elevator skins. And wouldn't you know it, that last rib did push in. And this probably has something to do with that transfer drill that they wanted me to do at the very last bit. But um, I have a little hook doll here. And with that, I am able to pull it out to get it to, to line up. But I suppose it would be very easy to, this one I got in already. <clears throat> so while you're finagling, getting this thing underneath the skin, well, maybe that's why the instructions say to put it over the elevator skin. Anyway, I don't know. People are putting it under the skin, I'm putting it under the skin, putting the tip skin under the elevator skin that is, um, but you just got to be careful they don't push that rib in because you can push it in far enough that all the clecos and rivets go only through these two skins and then miss the rib completely. So it's worth taking a look inside there, making sure that rib is actually out. So that's my, my little learning experience from taking it apart again. So that's the stuff I use to seal the inside. Um, I kind of did the bottom figuring that, that. I did the corners and the back. And I added a little bit in these corners. I put some tape around the outside so it doesn't ooze out. And I'm basically going to just assemble it now. I know it's not 100% watertight, but uh, Hopefully good enough. Kind of work out good because it's hard to see, but looks like the corners are pretty much sealed. So Hopefully the paint sticks to it. You got that tight rivet in. And I'm in the process of actually putting these tight rivets in. And I found out that tight rivet tool from averytools.com didn't go anywhere. I don't know if they were bought out by Cleveland, but anyway, you can get it at Cleveland. It's $20, $5, no, 
20 something. It's 25 dollars shipped ish. So I ordered it and then I looked at it and I said, well, I don't know. I didn't want to wait. <laughs> so I got one coming, but I decided to make my own. Literally, yeah, background's better. Copied it. Um, I have two holes because I tried two different things, one angled and one not angled, also a little bit bigger. Uh, very primitive. It's just a piece of flat stock from Home Depot. And I bent it and then chopped it on the table saw. This angle, for those interested, is 10 degrees. And uh, it works pretty good. I, uh, yeah, so put in the rivet, end up using this one. And basically what it does is it keeps the rivet head straight. And I bend the man, man the shaft here, whatever it's called, not a mandrel, but this a little bit and pull it out. I think that's the right way to do it. Seems to work. Uh, I, let me see if I can stabilize the camera, I'll show you. Okie doke. See if we can do this without knocking the camera off. So yeah, I bend it a little bit that way, make sure it's flush on the bottom. And yeah, it looks really good. You know, you probably can't see this one because it's behind the other rivet, but... I like it. One more for you. And if I'm off a little bit, forgive me. Your vantage point is probably better than mine trying to record this. Good to me. Camera was in girly mode there. Um, there you have it. Took about 10 minutes to make, if that, assuming you have the stock and the tools to do it. And uh, this is the knockoff, fake, get into tight place, RV, wannabe, rivet pulling tool available at Derek's Ghetto Aircraft Supply Store. Just kidding. Great idea. Totally copied it. And uh, I don't have to wait for my official $25 one. <laughs> I think that actually concludes the elevator. The elevator and the trim tab. And for that case, most of the assembly of the tail feathers. I know I have to do the plastic trimming for this. I have to, I still have to safety wire the pins in because I can't find my safety wire. And I have to fix or finalize the end caps that go on there. So there's a few little things left, but looking ahead in my mighty page manual here, it almost seems like we're gonna be starting the wings next. So I'm kind of excited about that. This goes together really well. Uh, it's very, very methodical. I've learned a ton. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe somebody got something out of my rookie assembly here. I, looking back, I don't think I do anything any different so far. Uh, probably 
just building confidence on making sure you're doing it the right way because uh, I feel I'm getting better at deburring all of the, the rivet um, holes. I mean, it's a lot of work. I'm probably overdoing it. I, I, I put it together, Clayco it, transfer drill them, take it all apart, clean it, clean it inside out, put it all together, Clico half of it, rivet half of it. So I'm not sure if it, all that is necessary, but I'm not a production builder. This is uh, the first, probably not the last. I could totally see myself building another plane. And uh, my friend George is working on the fuselage and I actually want to shoot over to his house and maybe take a video and interview him uh, just so the series is kind of complete because it doesn't make any sense to just show the wings. And um, yeah, maybe we'll do that. All right, next up is strategizing the next move. And you don't need to watch me do that.